associated with this legal entity and is already USMF. Would you like to select this record or would you like to create a new entity for it? This is an example of not to accidentally type in something into the system that has been already entered. This eliminates the issue that most companies had, like for the sake of discussion, accidentally a clerk enters Microsoft as the vendor name and then the other day puts Microsoft Co, the other day puts Microsoft Corp. So you can actually see that you're referring to the same vendor, but you accidentally type in a different name. So global address book functionality now gives you the capability if you accidentally type something and you meant something else, you can at least begin choose from that list. So since I already have created that, let's go ahead and put GB Publishing again. And indeed, let's go ahead and put another group here for the sake of discussion. And I can specify number 20 and call it Publishers. So you could group your vendors based on their activities or based on their terms of payment or based on the geographical, whatever you like, you can actually group them. So that would be the vendor group. Now, let's talk about uh, other information. These are additional values that you could plug in. Of course, so many of these fields are self-explanatory. From here also, you could change the party association that goes back again to Global Address Book. For the sake of discussion, if this is a specific vendor, let me save this. I can change the party association and actually create a new record and give it a new party. So in case the company gets bought out or perhaps they change their legal name, you could actually change it, add it to a global address book and change it here. So you could assign it with a different party. That's one thing you could do. Also from here, you could copy it to other legal entities. Now, if I collapse general FASTAP and let's quickly browse existing FASTAP. That's address that you could assign. You could have multiple addresses for each vendor. These are contact information for each vendor. Of course, you could have multiple. Miscellaneous details, like how much credit do you have for this vendor the vendor has given you? Zero means there's no limit. Vendor profile, if you are dealing with like government contracts, these are important. You have to specify what is this vendor is all about. Sometimes buying from a specific vendor requires you to buy a certain percentage from a specific group, like a uh, minority owned, let's say. This is very important when it comes to public sector. Purchasing demographics, again, what would be the default currency? Let's say the Great Britain uses British pound. So I change the vendor to be GBP. What line of business is all business intelligent information you could put in. Uh, invoice and delivery. If you notice, by default, I created a vendor. And the vendor account is set to C0002. But as you see, the invoice account is not set by default. You can actually set the invoice account either to the same or a different vendor. This resembles the scenario of franchising. Like you can buy from one vendor but pay somebody else. You could do the same thing with the customer shortly. You could sell to one customer but invoice somebody else. So you have that capability here. In this example, I just choose the same vendor. Now, other information is important here. We talk about briefly about sales tax group here. Of course, uh, our discussion is not about how to set up a sales tax. But if you would like to set up a sales tax that the vendor actually assigns as a default for you, then the system automatically can calculate the sales tax by the time you register the vendor invoice here. Also, sales tax setup usually is for your customers that you calculate and withhold the sales tax, and then you communicate with your authority and you pay them. So the number sequence group here is giving you the capability in order to kind of have a different grouping of values or numbers that gets assigned for a series of different vendors based on a group, let's say. For instance, you could have a number sequence that identifies all the domestic vendors differently from all the foreign vendors. So that would be a capability here. Lots of other fields. Later in supply chain training management, we are going to discuss uh, entirely about the site, warehouse, and other information. Here, I just wanted to show you, you do have that capability in order to set this up as a default values. That's not the finance training. What we care about is payment. The payment starts with the terms of payment. If you remember, that was one of the fields in vendor group. If I right click at it and go to the view details, you can actually take a look at this form and I can create a brand new one. What this gives me of how many days do I have for paying the vendor, let's say, or how many days do I give my customer for them to pay me. So I just call it the net 30, let's say. And as a matter of fact, there are many different methods of payments. And if it's a cash, you have to use collect on delivery and select cash method. Therefore, you have to have a ledger posting for it. If it is not cash method, it's just collect on delivery. That means as soon as you got delivered, you got to pay for it, either by check or by, say, credit card. You just use the COD. 
you don't use cash so COD doesn't stand for cash uh, on delivery it stands for collect on delivery just for an info so I use like net 30 and other fields that we're not going to get into the detail of it I just want to show it to you right click view details payment schedule is important in case you would like to have an installment plan so if you would like to have an installment plan you give it a payment schedule like over three months and then you could specify the allocation are you going to pay the total amount over three months or fixed amount over three months etc so that's the scenario that you could specify the payment lines of course if it's a total you're going to pay the total over three months therefore automatically gets allocated if it's a fixed amount based on that you're going to specify how much then you have to say how much of the value would be if it is like fixed quantity you say how many and finally if it is specified then there's a payment line that can be identifying how many can be paid based on a percentage or amount I don't use this payment schedule but as you notice here if you do accept an installment plan or if you are going to pay by an installment plan and vendor has accepted you need to have a payment schedule payment day again is one of those uh, criteria that you could probably have a, a specific policy say I'm only paying on this day of a week or on this a day of a month so you could give it a name and say the first m day of a week or perhaps you can set a month here you have to change this criteria to month and then you could specify the number so again these are the things that automatically calculates and see how uh, let's say the system is due in order to pay for some invoices or receive some payment from other customers you could uh, specify certified company check as an option and then uh, specify the payment type to see what is it if it's a credit card then you have to use credit card processing of course Microsoft has site services then you can take a look at dynamic online services and offer it to 